Proteins are manufactured in our cells. The DNA in the nucleus of cells contains the instructions of how to make proteins. The process of reading these instructions is called transcription. Here we'll introduce you to the process of transcription. This will be suitable for a general science course such as Science 10 or for a review in Biology 12. The topic is covered in greater detail in more advanced biology courses like Biology 12. A nucleus in the cells contains very long strands of DNA. We'll imagine such a strand here. A gene is a section of DNA which contains the code or instructions for making a particular protein. The number of base pairs in an actual human gene can vary from several hundred to two million. Near the beginning of a gene is a special sequence of nucleotides called a promoter. A promoter signals an enzyme to start transcribing the gene. At the end of the gene is another special sequence of nucleotides called a terminator. This signals the enzyme to stop transcribing the gene. A special enzyme attaches itself to the DNA in the region of the promoter. This enzyme is called RNA polymerase. It has the job of using the coding sequence of nucleotides on the gene to produce a molecule of RNA. Here we'll look at how it produces a molecule of messenger RNA or mRNA. Let's see how it carries this out. The RNA polymerase unwinds and separates the two strands in a section of DNA. This forms a sort of bubble in which nucleotides are exposed. The RNA polymerase then adds nucleotides that were free in the nucleus to one strand of the open DNA. Let's take a look at this process in more detail. Here's a closer view of how we can imagine this bubble in DNA. The enzyme RNA polymerase binds itself to one of the strands and is ready to do the job of transcription. Notice that there are many free-floating nucleotides available here. They have letters which depict the base they have. For example, you can see many C's, A's, and G's. Also notice the nucleotides that we've colored green here. They contain the base uracil. Remember in RNA, uracil is used rather than thymine, which is used in DNA. At this point, it's good to review the base pairing rules for RNA and DNA nucleotides. Cytosine for RNA pairs with guanine in DNA, and guanine for RNA pairs with cytosine in DNA. Also, adenine for RNA pairs with thymine in DNA. Remember that RNA contains the base uracil rather than thymine, so uracil in RNA pairs with adenine in DNA. Now we'll go back to our model. With the help of RNA polymerase, a nucleotide with cytosine pairs up with guanine on the DNA. And next, a nucleotide with uracil pairs up with adenine on the DNA. As nucleotides are added, their phosphate and sugar groups bind to form a backbone on the new mRNA molecule that is forming. Now watch as the rest of the nucleotides bind with their complementary bases on the template DNA strand. We see that as the new mRNA molecule is formed, it separates from the template DNA strand. But it's not finished yet. RNA polymerase will continue to unwind and unzip the DNA, and new nucleotides will be added to the mRNA molecule. This will continue to happen until the terminator sequence is reached. Now we'll go back to the simpler model. The RNA polymerase will continue to unwind and unzip the DNA on the leading side. While on this side, the DNA 
has been used to make the mRNA so it will rezip and recoil as the bubble moves to the right. As the bubble moves down the DNA, the mRNA molecule gets longer as more nucleotides are added to it. This continues to happen until it reaches the terminator sequence on the gene. The terminator sequence signals transcription to stop happening, the DNA bubble closes up, and the new mRNA molecule separates from the strand, and the RNA polymerase leaves. Now we'll take a closer look at the new mRNA strand that has been made, and we'll straighten it out a bit, but it's not quite ready to leave the nucleus yet. It is modified in three ways. First, a special cap is added to one end. And secondly, something called the poly-A tail is added to the other end. The details and functions of these will be covered in more advanced biology courses. We will mention here that there are some sections of mRNA that are not actually used to code for proteins. In the third modification, these are removed from the mRNA strand. And the coding parts of the mRNA are joined together. This is now called mature mRNA, and it's ready to leave the nucleus. We can imagine the mRNA in the nucleus like this. It will now pass through a pore in the nuclear membrane and enter the cytoplasm, where it is now ready to take part in the next phase of protein synthesis, which is called translation. During translation, the code carried by the mRNA is used to manufacture a specific protein.